Oh, and one more thing. Hey guys, Dan from On One here, back with another sneak peek. In this episode, I want to show you what is the culmination of all the cool masking powers that we're working on right now, and that's the ability to actually wrap them up into a preset. So we've created a whole new category of what we call AI adaptive presets. They can actually see what's in your photo and do the right thing area by area. So let me give you a few examples. You notice over here in my preset browser, there's a category at the top called AI adaptive presets. And when I click on this, you'll see the categories of presets that it comes with. There's a category for architecture and for landscape and people and cars and sky and wildlife. Those are all things we can recognize and work on automatically. And we've been working on building some really great presets that'll let you do great looks without having to do any brushing at all. So I'm going to start off here in the people category. One of the really cool things this will allow you to do is to apply a filter to people or to the opposite of people within a scene. So I've created a bunch of presets that help me enhance a background in a studio. Not necessarily replace it, but to add some texture on top of it to make it more interesting. So let me show you some examples here. So as I mouse over my preset browser, you'll see the preview actually updates with them. There it is. This preset is going to add a concrete texture to the background, but not apply it to my subject. It's a great way to extend the number of backgrounds you have in your studio. Let me show you another one. Here's kind of a different concrete texture that I like just like that, or maybe even I want to go with kind of an earthy, rusty colored background like this one. If I want to use it, I simply click on it. And of course, with the fade slider, I can control just how strong that adjustment is. So maybe I want it to be a little lighter texture applied to my photo. Now I want to show you how these work from photo to photo. I made these not just for this photo, but to work on any portrait photo. So I'll just bring up my film strip down here at the bottom, and we'll go to a different portrait. So watch, I can do those same things. So if I go to the concrete background, you see the concrete background is being applied. It's a light colored background, so it's going to blend in a little bit more. Same thing with that rust colored background. But you can go way beyond the basics of just swapping out a background to do all sorts of things. You can combine portrait AI with this to do retouching. I've even created one here that mimics the very popular double exposure look that you see today. I'm going to click on it and show you what it's actually doing. If I go over to my effects tab, You'll see how it's added three different filters. It added a tone enhancer, a cross process, and then it applied a texture and used that mask AI to apply it just to people. And if we look at the mask, you can see the great quality of the AI mask that it generated automatically. It's even got all the little curlicues in her hair built into that mask. Now it doesn't just have to be people that are inside a studio as well. It works with outside portraiture too. Now this shot's got great bones, but it's a little flat. It, there's no real sun or life to the photo. So I've built one called Sunny Field. This adds a rich glow, but only to foliage. It takes the person, the subject, and adds a little dynamic contrast so they pop out more, and it adds a sun flare in the corner. But it's smart enough to know to reduce the amount of sun flare and the amount of sun glow on the subject so that it's not overpowering, but yet still looks balanced and natural. Here's another one that's really easy, and I love it, and that is to add a little bit of glow to everything except your subject. That way it's going to get darker and richer, and your subject will pop out more. So here's one I've built called Glow Background. There you go. Let me turn that on and off so you can see before and after. There's before, straight out of the camera, and after. And what this did is it simply adds a dynamic contrast to the subject and a glow to the background. Quick way to make your photo pop. Now these adaptive presets go way beyond just working with people. Let's go back to the categories, and there's a whole category for wildlife photos. And here I want a kind of a similar look where my subject becomes sharper and crisp and the background takes on a little bit of a glow. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's the original photo, and there's after. Now look at the mask that it generates automatically for this bear. It's crazy the quality of the mask. It actually gets all the little fur along the edge. And if you look, this is a complex background. That would be very hard to mask using any of the other masking techniques. But the AI masking technology is so good it can actually pick up the full shape and even the hair along the edge. This works with architecture photos as well. Let's jump into the architecture category. There's basic settings that'll add just a little bit of pop to the buildings, but you notice it doesn't affect the sky. Or it can convert to black and white and add that pop. Or even do things like add a whole new sky and do all that work at once. And of course, because these are all non-destructive, I can easily go in and adjust their settings on it. So in this case, I want to pick a sky where there's a little bit more clouds in the middle so that the airplane will pop out more. So 
So I'll just go pick a different category and then I just look for one where there's some clouds in the middle. There we go, maybe you like that one. So it replaced the sky, softened the sky, enhanced the contrast on the buildings, does it all in one preset. I didn't have to brush or make complex layers or complex masks or any of that stuff. Those AI adaptive presets can really do it all for me. Now I know a lot of you guys love landscapes. Let me show you some of the things we have up our sleeve for landscape photos. For a desert photo like this, I always, in my mind, think of the rock as being more red. Well, it's easy to make the rock more red, but not affect the rest of the photo. At the same time, we could also take the blue in the sky and make it more blue. I'm going to grab this Desert Glow preset right here, which I think works well with that little bit of sun peeking through there. And if we look at what it's done, it's added warmth to the rock in the foreground, it's darkened the blue in the sky, and it's added a little bit of glow to the rocks as well. And if you look in, look at the mask, it's generated a high quality mask for me automatically. I didn't have to go through and paint or brush any of those hard areas to figure out where they're at. Let me show you another one. I really want to pump up the fall look in this photo. So I'm going to grab the fall enhancer. You can see how it's grabbed all the yellows and all the oranges and enhanced them and shift them to a warmer direction. It's also made all of the leaves and branches pop out, but yet hasn't affected any of the fog in the background. Because again, it's created that amazing high quality mask for us automatically. And like any other preset, I can use the fade slider right here in the preset browser to control how strong that is, but just to the regions that it's actually affecting. So I can dial in just the strength that I want for this photo. Pretty cool. All right, one more, we don't wanna leave skies out. There's a whole category of sky adjustments as well. Perhaps you just wanna make the clouds a little bit more dramatic by adding a little bit of contrast to them or making it appear more stormy than the original, or maybe you wanna warm it up or simply cool it down a little bit, or maybe you wanna add a gradient of both. There we go. Let me turn that on and off so you can see before and after. And you notice how it's not affecting anything except for the sky, just like that. Now we're gonna include a ton of these adaptive presets to get you started, but the best thing is you can easily create your own. Anytime you add a filter in effects, you can pick the region that you wanna affect over on the left-hand side, and you can also adjust it after the fact in the mask section where it says mask AI, you can pick what it's applied to and you can control the mask parameters like density and feather. All of that gets saved into a preset. So you can create your own adaptive presets that do just what you want based on the subject matter in your photos. There you go. Thanks for watching.